beautiful blood trail. You can follow that in your sleep. Hello everybody. Would have loved to have shown you the hunt on this deer, but uh, apparently the uh, Hero 9 doesn't like to work in 17 degree weather. So uh, when I kicked it on, it only gave me 14 seconds of footage. <laughs> uh, thought it was running. Had this one come in with five others and uh, pretty, pretty decent shot on her. It was a little high, but it comes out in the lower third. Would like to have been down about an inch and a half uh, at the elevation I was at. Aim for your exit hole. And uh, I hit just a titch high, not not too much, but uh, she went about 150 yards, which is a little further than what I had expected. But uh, I'm gonna get her home, take her apart. I'll be doing some canning on this deer, and uh, since we wasted the footage on the hunt, I might as well take you into the process of canning a deer. So uh, I'm gonna get busy on getting this one ready for the process. And I'll take you to us actually doing the process. This is a way for you young ones out there that's never done it before. Uh, very easy to do. And we'll walk you through step by step and we, you'll have meat uh, in jars that you can use all year long. And as soon as you get it out, it's, it's ready to go. You just gotta make it warm. So uh, without refrigeration or anything like that, great way to uh, do up what you get in the field and uh, not have to use your freezer. So. Uh, no reason for every deer to be a freezer queen. Uh, put some in some jars and there's all kinds of meals you can make out of it. So let's go to that now. Uh, have a great season and this is canning deer. We're canning the deer meat right now. So I'm just gonna run through doing one jar of what you have to put in the jar. And uh, it's real easy to do when you debone the deer uh, just start cutting everything in small chunks, remove as much silver skin off of it as possible, and then that way you end up with a good product going right into the jar and you're not trying to do it on the table while you're packing them. So this is Tom's deer actually that uh, we have on a video, his buck, and while we were deboning it we were chunking every piece of it up to prep it for actually canning it. So. I'm going to do one up here, show you what goes into it, and then uh, we'll go through the rest of the process. It's really easy to do, and it'll feed you and your family the entire year. So if you want beef and noodles or anything like that, all you got to do is dump it out and make it warm. And uh, real easy to do. So, and a great way to keep it. You don't need any refrigeration, you don't need anything. So all we have is some coarse ground black pepper. Some minced garlic in a jar. Uh, you can do a garlic clove, uh, one quarter clove or one clove itself of garlic, just the little segment in there works really well. Uh, if you want to use the raw and actually break it apart and get it out of there. A quarter seems to be, well, that's the way I like it. it you can taste the garlic and it's not overpowering, won't give you heartburn or whatever. And uh, some pickling salt or canning salt. You don't want to use iodized salt because it'll make your meat look gray or like a nasty brown. Uh, the iodine in it uh, makes it pretty rough looking. Uh, it's still edible, but it will discolor your product and make it look pretty bad. So use the pickling salt or canning salt as we call it. Uh, there's no additives or anything in it and you do need a little bit. So. Total ingredients, I do, and you can play with this if, if it's not to your liking, but uh, I do a half teaspoon of the salt, half teaspoon of the coarse ground black pepper, and a heaping three quarter of a teaspoon, I would call it by the time I'm done, of the garlic, because I really like garlic. And uh, so we'll start with that. It's okay to get some of the juice out of there too. It won't hurt nothing. 
Yeah, like that. <laughs> it's not a half teaspoon. It's a a heaped one. Yeah, just a little just a little mound there. And I put all that in the bottom of the jar. So all my ingredients end up in the bottom. Okay, so we got our garlic in there. And then just half teaspoon of the canning salt. And lay newspaper down. It keeps everything kind of neat and you can just roll it up and then clean your counter after you're done. And uh, you won't get in trouble. And that's the total ingredients in the jar. Half, half, and a heaper. And that's as, that's as hard as it gets. Now we did boil these jars for like 10 minutes a piece to sterilize them. Then they went straight to the counter. And now we'll put the meat in there. And we pack it as tight as we can get the meat in there. And leave yourself about an inch or so. And then we add one third cup of water to this to, to make the juice. And it'll make its own juice and then that one third cup will make up so you'll actually have a juice line to the top of your meat. Uh, I use the distilled water because it doesn't have any any uh, additives or anything like that and it's, it's steamed off. It's actually like a condensation water and a lot of your tap water's just got a lot of nasties in it and, and lime scale and everything else and and I just think that's a better way to do it. You don't have to do that. You can get it right out of your tap and use it. But I put about a third cup in there. So pack the meat uh, as tight as you can get it. Leave yourself an inch. Put a third cup of water in it and you're done. Uh, then it's just a matter of putting the top on there. And when you put the ring on, just run it down until it touches the lid. And give it just a about a... 16th more of a turn. You don't want to tighten it down. You want it to just run it on there and two fingers, just a little bit of a tweak and that's it. And then that's how you can it in the canner. So we're going to do one of these up. I'll show you the level. We'll put the water in there and uh, you'll see what it looks like as a done product getting ready to go into the canner. Try to keep anything off the rim of the jar. And then we got a masher from the uh, meat grinder we use to pack it down there. And don't worry about your seasonings because they'll blow up through there when this jar is boiling on the inside. That's why we put it in the bottom. It'll make it to all the meat. And the leg pieces that are usually tough and have a lot of tendon material in there, it will cook down into something that if you touch it with a spoon, it will fall apart. There's no issues with any of the tough cuts staying tough at all. Okay, so we got our third cup. You don't have to go all the way to the top. This is kind of a just about kind of thing. Drop that in there. And it looks a little full, but once it gets down through that, see we got you look real close, you got some gaps right there. So we're a little, we didn't leave ourselves quite the inch. Then I'll let that water seep down through and then I'll kind of mash it a little more. But once it gets going, it'll all fall down in. Once it's cooked up, it'll actually end up being down in here on your jar. So pack it as much in there as you can, but leave yourself that gap at the top. Otherwise you'll be blowing stuff out of it into your water in a canner and you'll have a mess. So. Don't get too greedy when you're packing the jars and then just wipe your tops when you put your lid on. And then like I said, the ring, just run it down. It's touching, that's it. And then when you get it out of the canner, which we actually have a load right now that's uh, cooling down and uh, you gotta let it bleed off naturally and it takes quite a while to do so we'll get that and then I'll show you loading the canner and we have a seven quart so we put seven in at a time and uh, firing it up and I'll show you the process of doing that now at our elevation we we 
pack the meat or cook the meat at, at 15 pounds for 90 minutes. And that that's where we need to be at our elevation. We're here in Ohio, so there's a build up process and then you actually pressure cook it at 15 pounds for 90 minutes and then you let it naturally bleed back down. You pull them out and they don't see them until you pull them out and they'll be boiling in the jar still, still cooking. And when you set them out, you hear them start popping as they seal. Then you can go through and tighten your lid the rest of the way. So that's where we're at right now. We're gonna pack the rest of these jars exact same way. And uh, we'll get to you when we're actually putting them in the canner. All right, so we got our jars all done up and we're loading them into the pressure cooker now. You don't want a whole lot of water in your pressure cooker because you want to allow for the displacement of the water when you put the jars in there. And like I said before, this is a seven quart, so you can put seven of these babies in there at a time. Tom, he's loading them up there. And I got one, he's got one. And that's that. Now I'm going to throw the uh, lid on there. And they usually have an arrow on there and I can never find it. There it is. They'll have an arrow right on the lid usually. And then there's an arrow on the one that you want. Set her down. Lock her in. All right, using a foreign stove here. So you leave that on high, it'll start building up once it starts boiling. It'll build up pressure and then it'll start shooting steam out of this thing straight. And it'll do it enough that it actually pops your seal up here. And then you wanna run that for about 10 minutes. When you're pumping steam out of this and it actually pops this up, let it run like that for 10 minutes before you cap it off with your pressure regulator. And uh, then you cap it off with a pressure regulator. You let it build up to, in this case, 15 pounds. And, and once you're at that 15 pounds, you start your 90 minutes. Uh, it doesn't just take 90 minutes. It's a long process, but uh, in the end, it's worth it. You get some really nice food to last you all year. And uh, you don't really have to do much with it. Just keep it kind of in a cool place. Uh, the cellar is great, but uh, uh, I keep mine in the cupboard. It's usually about 65 degrees or 60 degrees, and and it'll last you a year. So, uh, well, it won't because you'll start eating it, but that's okay. But that's how you do it, and we'll get back to you when we're doing the steam and this thing has popped up and sealed itself, and we put the pressure regulator on there. And uh, we'll see you when we get to that point, which will take a minute. And when you build it up, it'll start steaming like that. Uh, just keep your heat on high until she starts blowing like a choo-choo train. And then your little seal deal pops up. And uh, that's prepping it up for starting your poundage. And I usually let it run about 10 minutes like that, five minutes like that. And then uh, you close her off with your, with your weight on there. Okay, in between eating five pounds of Halloween candy, uh, our pressure come up, popped our seal up. We had steam rising out of the port here for 10 minutes. I covered it up, kept the heat up on high. We've built to the 15 pounds on the regulator here. And uh, this is actually weighted. It won't, I think, get over 16 and a half pounds. But once you get to your 15 pounds, just kick it down to kind of a just above low heat and make sure that it stays on that 15 pounds. Now we wait 90 minutes while it's on that 15 pounds. And that's it. And when we get to that 90 minutes, just kick heat, all the heat off and uh, it'll slowly be, bleed itself down to zero. This will fall and then you can take your regulator off, let the rest of the steam kind of clear, take your lid off and you're unloading like you would just seen previously. That's how you can a deer. It's 
easy peasy. It's just very time consuming, but it's worth it because you're going to have it all year long and uh, you're not using up your freezer space. Plus you're not paying somebody else hundreds of dollars to make you something, you know, but if you wanted to can your own deer, uh, beef and noodles, uh, if you want to make a roast or a stew, you can actually do all your vegetables with your bullion and all that and start with that and once it's ready put this right in it and you're done you don't have any of that prep work or being worried about whether it's getting tender enough because you're not going to beat the tenderness of of pressure cooked meat so okay so the 90 minutes has passed we kicked the heat off it's cooked itself down pressure dropped we're back at zero little metal doodad there seals it up has dropped now we're ready to take the lid off and I've already heard them sealing inside the cooker, so watch the steam. Do not burn yourself. Lid away. I don't want to, I'm not responsible if you melt your fingers off. I'm just showing you the process. And there we have it. Seven jars still in there. You can still hear them boiling away. And we'll get those out. And anything that's not sealed will seal itself. Just have yourself a cutting board or something like that to set them on so you don't ruin your counters or your table. Get yourself in a bunch of trouble, you know, with whoever's concerned about that. That's how it's done. Any questions, just drop it in the comments. I'll answer them. Uh, it's not real technical. People are afraid of these things. But as long as you have a regulator on there and you, you pay attention, it's only 15 pounds. Uh, just don't go over that unless you live in an atmosphere that calls for it to be higher. Um, that's pretty much it. Well, thank you for coming along. And, uh, there went one right there. I heard it. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> so they're sitting there sealing themselves and, uh, that's a success. And hope you get out in the woods and get something and throw it in the jars for later in the year. It's easy to cook something up out of it. So, uh, one of my suggestions is breakfast burritos with eggs, a little bit of this meat and a little bit of jalapeno in there and you wrap it in a burrito. Yeah, all day food there. Take it hunting with you. <laughs> all right, we're out of here. Thanks for coming along.